fucking hell, it's 12.30. Right. Fuck. Yeah, we should get on with it, shouldn't we? Yeah, get on with me. Right. Hi, guys. Welcome to... I'm going to be a lot more relaxed this time, you know? Hey, guys. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 16 of Playtime Podcast. How are you, Miles? I'm good, brother. How are you? That was a very soothing message. I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Mellow. Mellow. Yeah. You feeling mellow today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nope. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, How are you yeah. feeling? You good? <clears throat> oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. You know what? We did a. Uh, I don't know. If I'm looking to the camera, but we did a first take of this podcast, and I was a little bit like rusty. Rusty. You 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 had something in your throat, like Do almost I sound like, like, like I'm something in my throat. No, now it's good. It's kind of gone. Maybe it was my retainer. retainer. And maybe it was a retainer. Maybe it was. Oh, fair. Okay, we sort that out. No. Oh yeah, another thing we should talk about actually before we get into today's uh, topics, Charlie. It has got worse and worse over the years I've known him. He forgets everything that he has on his person. Like, he went to Apple recently, okay, bought some new earphones, okay, because he lost the other ones. And he went, I saw him in the gym, and he's like, yeah, got the new ones, sick. I was like, oh, finally, that's good. And then he just suddenly goes, goes oh, my God, no. And I'm like, look at that, like, what have you forgot now? I was like, I forgot the iPhone, the AirPod cases at the store. How do you Honestly, do mate, that? I am an idiot. Yeah, I know. I literally just bought them and I left the case in the store. Yeah, like so, so. And nice. then, what did you do with your retainers recently as well? Yeah, I I lost my retainers as well. I, I literally took them out after I lost my AirPods when I went for some food. The waiter took them away, threw them in the bin, couldn't find them. Yeah, well. So uh, yeah, not a solid day on that no, front. No, not at all. What else happened yesterday? The cryo. Well, I'm in the cryo. You know, the no... Uh... Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, we went to this place called uh, Repos. Repos. Yeah. Go check it out. It's sick. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool place in High Street Cairn. And they've got all sorts of recovery thing. They've also got, uh, I think, a new um, oxygen chamber coming into the place. Anyway, so, uh, Charlie was like, yeah, I know the owner. Like, uh, he's invited us to get down. I was like, okay, sweet. Let's go. Outside gym. Epic. We did infrared sauna and then we did a cryotherapy. And the cryotherapy, there's different types of ones, but the one they had is like a literal chamber that you go into. So your the whole body is covered, uh, which is mad. Like it goes to like minus 85, minus 90, yeah. something like that. It's crazy. Um, and you go for four minutes. And um, so before you go in, you have to protect your your private parts, your ears, because they get really, really cold. You've got to put gloves on. You've got socks on and some shoes. And we were getting ready and he's like, okay, Charlie's like, yeah, I'll go first. Yeah, 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 sweet. Three, two, one, goes in, right? He's jumping up and down. A minute goes in and he's like, oh man, you know, my, my feet are really cold. And we're like, okay, that shouldn't really be happening. And um, we realized, we look, me and the girl who's uh, working the chamber, we look down, we see that he's forgotten to put the shoes on. So he's in his socks, basically about to have frostbite. Literally, honestly, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen you do. Because I'm like, how do you... You do things, you forget things. The no, the thing is with that, right? She just gave me some socks, so I just assumed that was it. And then before I went in, you guys were like, "Oh, like it's quite difficult." I was like, "No, it's no. fucking not." Yeah, I can do this. So Easy. I went in, and then my feet were getting unbelievably cold. Like mm. I couldn't. St I was having to like move around and move my feet because they were just so yeah. so cold. Yeah, and yeah. um, yeah, lucky I came out because I would have got frostbite on my feet. <laughs> yeah, and you started stressing out, yeah. and you were like, "Am I going to be okay?" Am I yeah. okay? Is my feet okay? And I was like, yeah. yeah, you're fine, mate. You've only been there for one minute. Yeah. But yeah, these are the things that Charlie does, which I I, I kind of find endearing from you because you're like a, a little lost puppy sometimes. With, a little lost with, puppy? Yeah, you are like a little Labrador, you know, runs around and forgets things. No, the, you know what it is, mate? The cryo thing is quite separate. That's just fucking stupid. But um, <laughs> the forgetting things, I am just not a good multitasker. So often the common theme of when I lose stuff is when I'm with you. <laughs> Sorry, what's that supposed it's, to mean? It's not my fault. It's your. Fault. <laughs> to be fair, I said this yesterday to you. I was like, "Why am I always witnessing you yeah. forget things?" You know what, mate? Legit, it's what happens is I start talking to someone, and if I'm like packing up my bag, I just won't. I won't be focusing. I'll just be he, like, there, can yeah. I also say he does this with his bike? Okay, he's got a huge like a bike, a bike, right? He brings it upstairs because he rides into the gym with his bike, and then we'll leave. And he goes, ah, oh, the bike's upstairs. I'm like, how? How do you forget that? <laughs> it was your ride home. Yeah, yeah. 
well, I'm a forgetful guy, can't multitask. Mm. Haven't got a lot going for me, really, have I? <laughs> no, you don't. Um, but we love uh, you anyway, so that's fine. Don't no, I've got it. a lot going for me. What are you talking about, mate? Okay, all right, calm down. Bro, I'm, fuck me. Yeah, guys. Fuck me. Got a lot going for me. <laughs> I don't want to fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. What else has been going on, Miles? How would you what did you get to last night? Or should we should we talk about something else? <laughs> I uh yeah, I went for I actually went to a really cool restaurant called Louis. Um I've quite, heard, heard good things about this place. So cool. What did you um, eat? I had a it's a French restaurant, so I had a roast chicken with uh potato puree and um some greens. Just a quick one. Yeah. You know how everyone's like, Oh, everyone who's French loves snails. Yeah. Is it true? Yeah. Really? <laughs> they actually had snails on the menu yesterday, but I didn't have them. They're just like, like the, the snails I've had when I'm in Paris yeah. are... Uh, Garlic sauce. Very... green. It's like a green sauce, right? How did you know? Because I'm French. <laughs> Is that how they always have yeah, snails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just it. always garlic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's made, you ne- I was, oh you get the, in Spain they have their version of snails and it's in, it's in a broth. It's not really. It, I don't really like them. Whereas this one is quite nice because it tastes like not like chicken, but it's got that nice kind of consistency of meat. And then it's got this garlic sauce and butter, and it's so delicious. Also, the French literally put butter with everything. Yeah. But I I kind of love that. Honestly, if I lived in France, I my body fat would be humongous. Because everything you eat, pastries, restaurants, brasseries, they just love garlic, cream, milk. Like, if you went to France and you asked for oat milk, they would look at you and be like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. They don't do oat milk or coconut milk or, like, almond milk. Did you know there's so many different types of nut milks? Isn't that fucking weird? How do you teat um, an almond? Well, I mean, it's not like they have fucking udders, mate. Yeah, but that's what I'm wondering. How, how do you make almond milk? Well, it, like, you know, also, I say almonds. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know. <laughs> you know when you, um, next time you chew on an almond, yeah? yeah. Just chew it up and look in your mouth. It's like quite like... Uh, it's white. It's like white, creamy sort of... No, I've... Okay, how long are you chewing? How, how long are you chewing an almond? 10 minutes. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I can, and what, you just... And every time you just open your mouth to see it. Uh. No, but it, when it's really ground down, it's quite like... Uh, yeah. Spunky. <laughs> what is... Uh, actually, to go on to spunk... Um, the thing is, we've never, we can't really actually, I can't, we, we won't, we won't know this unless actually you've, t- you've tasted spunk before. No. But no. Wait, didn't someone say that they've tasted their own semen before? They did. Who was that? I think it was Temps. <laughs> What's Temps? Sorry, Temps. Sorry, Sorry, Temps. Sorry. Yeah, mate. How, how, what was that? How, didn't he say? Did he just try it? <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah, that's weird, man. That's weird. Like, like that's actually fucking weird yeah yeah tasting your own spunk like odd there's never been a point where i've come and went yeah i'll, I'll try with this <laughs> it's a very very weird thing to pop into your mind but i wonder it's like the same concept as like anything that comes out of your body and you wouldn't want to taste anything else would you yeah you wouldn't drink your own pee would you no unless you're you unless know you're like a rugby lad well, that's what they do yeah they f- mate they're fucking weird like these rugby- <laughs> aren't you a rugby lad no well no <laughs> mm. um <clears throat> no i mean i did uh this is quite a good story actually we can talk about my initiation uh, oh what was your initiation so <clears throat> sorry i've got a real um lot of throat there it's got a little tickle in the throat um so i used to play a lot of rugby at school and then i joined the rugby club when i went to newcastle uni yeah and um i did the initiation i didn't continue playing after that but Anyway, the well, initiation. after the initiation, <laughs> yeah, I I just did the initiation. I decided, nah, I'm right. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is weird, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is not you normal. You guys are fucked up. <laughs> um, so we basically had to meet in a park. This is in the depths of winter. Um, in like baby diapers. What? Yeah, uh, mate. If you, Sorry, if you, if you what? Think this is shocking. Wait until you hear the rest of this. Okay. okay. Um, in baby diapers. What time was it? Uh, in the evening, like nine it, o'clock, maybe. Oh, so in the evening? Yeah, it was pitch black. And then we had to meet in, you know, in parks, you get those like um, pontoon, are they called a pontoon? You know, like um, covered area, like round thing, like a wooden structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't yeah, know what yeah, you call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we had to stand in there. We all got sprayed with a number of sheep, sheep dye on us, like one, two or three. Are you serious? Then we went into the middle. We had to bring a shoulder of vodka each, had to down it while everyone egged us. 
<laughs> Sorry. What? Then we went on a uh, three- How much? A shot of vodka? Yeah, yeah, you had to down it. And then everyone was egging us. And then you split up into the three groups, went on like a three mile run. Met at the top of this hill. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. This is absolute lunacy. So let me get straight. <laughs> you met up at 9 p.m. in a random park yeah. with diapers. Yeah. You then had a pint of vodka whilst everyone else has thrown eggs at you. And then you went for a three mile run. That's just the start, mate. Met at the top of a hill. There's a, we turn up and there's like a tarpaulin down the hill. You know what that is? Yes, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheet. And um, we all were given a big thing of milk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the first group downs it and you have to down it until you throw up <laughs> your no you have to down it until you throw up onto the no up all in no. and then and then um yeah then you slide down <laughs> no slide down your own vomit and then you wait at the bottom as a um like a bowling pin and then the next group drinks throws up slides down into you as a bowling pin <laughs> <laughs> And then you repeat until all three groups have done it. Um, you repeat the process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, as in all three groups do it. Yeah. So we all do it at the bottom, covered in sick. <laughs> then um, what, what else happened? We played a game where you had to put a dog biscuit between your bum cheeks. <laughs> and and um, <laughs> you, all, you all sprint up the hill and the last person to get up the hill has to eat all the dog biscuits. <laughs> no! Then that's almost worse than soggy biscuit. Yeah. It's... <laughs> My God, Laurie in the back is cute. Um, reason. So wait. There, class, no, class, there, class question. No, did you did no. you did you eat the biscuits? No, fuck no. I was I was one of the first up, mate. Um, <laughs> so you had oh my god no this is um i'm not surprised that you said yeah this is not me for me lads did you not at the beginning when you turned up with diapers going i shouldn't be here right now <laughs> it, it was quite a uh or when you surprisingly it's a very bonding experience <laughs> Fuck like as in you you come out of it with all the other people you've done it with and you're like we've been through some fucking weird shit <laughs> um but yeah, there was just some other games like pasta, like there was a a chicken, un uncooked <laughs> chicken that we had to like pass along and like a fish and stuff. It all very fucking weird. Um, you, had to get, you, get to, you had to get an uncooked chicken and pass it on like a fish. What does that mean? No, no, no. As in, there was no <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? As in those two teams. <laughs> two teams? Two teams, and then there's like one team had an uncooked chicken. <laughs> one team had an uncooked chicken, one team had an uncooked fish, and then you had to pass it along the line, and then the last person to, last team to get the chicken or fish to the end had to do some sort of forfeit. And then the final thing was um, you had to put some Tabasco on your bell end. It's all a bit fucked, isn't it? <laughs> Did you do all of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and then and then the next day you, you you woke up and you went, yeah, not really for me this. <laughs> well, I I actually like I said it was quite a bonding experience. You go through some weird shit with with a lot of people. Um, so I got on well with everyone, and it was actually really good fun. I, I would actually do it again, mate, to be honest. <laughs> like, it was actually fucking. It was, Good crack, but um, that's, I've, I've that's... heard I've heard about some weird shit, mate. Like one of my other mates, yeah, yeah, he went to um, I won't name the uni. You but, should. Um, it's basically a very like rugby uni, like mm. rolled around that. Yeah, and some of the stuff he says that go, went on at these like rugby socials is fucked, mate. Like what? Like weird shit, mate. They just they ba basically he told me about this story where this guy, um. I'm not even sure this is like legitimate to say on the podcast. Go say it. It's a, it's a bit like we'll fucked. bleep it. We'll bleep it if it's really bad. Um, so basically, all of the freshers, like the new yeah. intake, um, they all had to like do this initiation thing at a rugby social where they all like. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, the captain, yeah, was like. <laughs> And trying to um, 
Don't say what you're about to and say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked, mate. What? What the fuck? I know, mate. <laughs> what the fuck? I know it's so weird, mate. And then they do like stuff like um, chug each other's piss and like. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's go and... back to the captain. So, what was the captain? Was basically yeah. But doesn't that make? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Exactly, it's so backwards, mate. <laughs> so, so I, who comes up? Oh, I've got another one as well, mate. So. <laughs> basically the uh the agrix yeah like ag agriculture people like farmers basically at my uni yeah they're just regarded as absolute fucking retrobates they're like i've heard proper, about i've heard about farmers proper like Parties. proper loose bastards yeah. and um they basically had this social where um you you had to say what you'll do to the next person in line and then it's, it's like some weird game anyway um I, I can't remember exactly what like the concept of the game was, but basically you you nominate what you're going to do to the next person, and then it stops somehow. It's like a spin the bottle almost thing, and then it's, you say sort of like quite outrageous stuff. And this guy said, "Oh, I'm going to shit on the other guy's chest." So then it landed on him, and he just gets up and just the other guy's like, "All right, then," lies down, and takes a shit on him. <laughs> How fucked up is that? And he just took it like a champ, mate. Took a shit to his chest. And, um, yes. It's mental, isn't it? It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, you don't know what to say, do you? I'm not, well, <laughs> fuck me. Fuck. Yeah, it's well, you know what? One thing that we will learn about that is that they all got closer. Yeah. And uni is a weird place, I think. That's what we've learned. <laughs> Can I just say, I'm so glad I didn't go to uni because if that is the fucking case, what the fuck? Well, I mean, look, all of this is optional. <laughs> this... Oh, I'm glad it is. No, as in like, you don't have to join any of these societies or whatever. Also, I think initiations these days are banned. Like, So yeah, I wanted to, because I wanted to go off the back of your your descriptive um, initiations uh, in your uni and other unis. So I literally, a couple of weeks ago, it came up on my, I think it was on, um, what's it called? Uh, Puberty, I think that social media app. Um, sorry, the Insta, um, whatever. Um and sorry, that made no sense. A land Bible, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was now in America, they've banned from frat houses all the initiations because I don't want to deep it, but a kid died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, overdosed because they told him to chug. A th I, I can't remember what alcohol it was. Um, it must have been maybe like a vodka or like a tequila, whatever it was. And he had never really drunk before. Um and he basically did the whole thing and then they had to do whilst he did that he had to, they tied him to a chair and then they uh, they left him they left all the um the the, the fr fr freshers uh, uh, on these chairs and then they pelted them with stuff it was really it's it's like it was really messed up very much like what you were saying that's why i was like fucking hell this is crazy because the whole initiation process i'm assuming is to create brotherhood that's what it is right yeah. like you just said like you yeah. kind of felt a lot closer but there is to a point where not only is it, is it messed up, I kind of almost think the me the more messed up it is, the better actually, rather than the more fucked in terms of alcohol, maybe even drugs is really scary because this guy overdosed on, well, he basically died because he had too much alcohol and he had never drunk before. Um, and it was like a litre of vodka or something and he passed. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked. He died in his sleep. They're, they're banned at all unis yeah, yeah. in the UK as well. So that's why they do it in the evenings. Mad. Like that. But it's... But what, like, where, did this, where, did, where did this come from? Like, where, where did the... Um... I don't know, mate. I think it's just a thing that's always been a case in, like, clubs and stuff like that. But it's like when you watch guy, American Pie. The guy who was on my uh, initiation got, like... I think he was borderline hypothermia. What? Uh, he had to go to, like... Yeah, had to go to a &E. he, he was really cold and... He was really cold. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's more than just cold. Yeah. Um, Shit. 
That's... But yeah, it's fu- it's really unsafe, obviously. And you're when you're doing the sort of shit that I was just describing that as well. You're fucking hell. Um, I mean, taking a shit to the chest and then yeah, just for the record, that wasn't me that did that. <laughs> um, that that was like some weird agric thing, but it's quite fucked up, isn't it? The whole concept of it. That's fucking. It's that is honestly. I I I knew about all of these like frat houses and you know um whatever they call this they're called site not societies what they called in the in the uk um, like clubs rugby clubs rugby whatever. clubs yeah because it it's very known in america for this type of behavior and also we've lived on as in the uk we watched this when we were young right watching american pie and then yeah. the, all the frat houses and all that kind of stuff but it's gone to a point where i almost think and this is probably the reason why it's got banned now it's like what extreme can we take this to yeah because you chugging a gallon of milk and then puking on the tarball to slide down like your bowling ball on your own puke slightly demoralizing isn't it <laughs> only, a, only a tad no the thing is like the stuff like that is pretty fucked um like i'm but surprised like, like i'm surprised you did that like uh, the, that that for me i would have got to the you know what the the uh pint of vodka with the eggs and the three mile run almost with in the diaper kind of funny and i'm like looking at my mate it's like this is fucked but this is funny i would have got to the hill and they said chug that and puke and slide i'm like you're funny mate no but the thing is like when you're doing it everyone's finding it fucking hilarious it's like people are laughing it's not like you're um sliding you know, in just... your puke is hilarious <laughs> no because it's just such a um i'm seeing you in a new light bro <clears throat> I mean, it's not something I'd take pleasure in doing again. You just said off that, that story. You were like, I wouldn't mind doing that again. Yeah, I did. Say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. No, but do you know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. It's quite a funny experience. Um, Glory, so... do, you, do you find that funny? <laughs> yeah, same yeah, here. Well, maybe maybe we'll do a playtime initiation for you, Glory. <laughs> it's not guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I'm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what. I, that's actually. You know what? That's actually taking me back a little bit. What? How? How? Intense how messed it? up it is. Yeah, it's fucked. Isn't it's it? really messed up. It's quite yeah. scary because also I can imagine like, uh, you know, your early twenties doing something like that and trying to prove yourself, and you're like, "Fuck it, I'll do it." It's really like it's horrible. It's demoralizing. It's it's yeah. It's not a uh, like for example. Well, yeah, as in. I- there I, I agree with what you're saying i think there's a line though like between funny initiations like that and ones that are just fucked like the one that's we were talking about where the guy's trying to fucking wank someone off that's fucked up yeah that's 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 really i've heard about one where um basically it was like an agrix one and they all had they all basically got put in the back of a black van <laughs> white van sorry and um they uh they're completely they're just naked with no clothes anything and they just get dropped in the middle of nowhere and they have to like basically find their way back and they're just like (laughs) they're just like dropped in the middle of nowhere naked and they just need to yeah find their way back to home basically that's (laughs) but like how is that an initiation how you've made it home well done Part of the You've not died. You've not well, died. It's really unsafe, isn't it? If, if, if I was walking in, the, in like wherever I was and I saw a naked man running to find himself home, I think I'd, I thought I'm tripping my balls. Also, what if like, yeah, you get attacked? Yeah. Yeah, mate. It's all, all a bit weird to be honest. But, um, okay. Well, anyone who is uh, a uni student, who obviously they've been banned, but I'm assuming there's probably some low-key ones still that still, on. yeah, still go on. Uh, please, if you listen to this, um, don't feel like you need to prove anything. And please, if you if you need to get undressed for initiation, walk away. I beg you, walk away. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, I think it's a very like rugby thing. They're fucking weird, mate. Rugby boys, aren't they? Yeah. No, no, they're very they're like, weird. Like naked and drinking piss and stuff so okay so going back to your story you um you so that happened how long after did you then quit when did I you played, when I, did you say okay this is enough now 
I, I didn't quit because of the initiation. I just quit because I didn't want to play rugby, basically. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad that I, was the case. No, ba basically, the reason I quit That's was because I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I played loads of sport when I was younger, like every day apart from a Sunday. So then when I got to uni, I was just a bit like mm. welcoming, not having any commitment like that. Yeah. So I just stopped. That was oh, it, really. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, I've never lived through anything of like that. Yeah, it's a uh, weird one. Yeah, damn. Do you think that gives you any sort of damage later on in life? What? Well, like, when you think about that story, do you do you think about it like, oh, that was actually hilarious? Or do you go, fucking hell, that, that's a messed up? M no, I thought it was quite funny, um, the one I did. Yeah. But I can see a lot of the ones, like the one we I just described there, that can be very traumatic. Surely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, let's um, let's move it along. This is a more um, positive notes. Have you ever done anything like that, Miles? I've done stupid shit on my own what's, when I'm drunk. What's the, what's the most stupid shit you've done on your own when you're drunk? Um. Ah. Oh, okay. I, I, I ordered a pizza. <laughs> yeah, I ordered two toppings. I'm not gonna lie to you; it's nowhere near what you have done. Like, it really depends on what level you're talking about. Fucked up, like fucked up in the sense like what I've done when I was really, really drunk, or fucked up in the sense like I've done something where I'm like, oh, I've you know done something that's a bit you know fucked up. Just give me something. Okay, uh, I was 18, and it was like. Oh, 19. Yeah, 18, 19. And it was my like clubbing days when I was a promoter. And um, where did you used to promote, by the way? Bougie's, Drury Club, um, Libertine, and uh, Vaudeville. Didn't you ask me where Libertine was the other day? Yeah, because I haven't been in years. But you used to work there? No, I used to promote there. So I used to bring get girls there. I, used to, I never went in the club, Libertine. Drury Club was my club on Drury Lane. Fucking, they closed down. It was amazing. Okay. Uh, anyway, so... But sorry, just to yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, just carry on, carry on. No, I was just gonna say, like, surely if you used to work there, you'd know where it is. Yeah, it's in Oxford somewhere, Oxford Street, near there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, I never went to that one. That was right. I. I got. I brought girls there. I was right, part of a right, right, team right. called Combo and Combo Combo. Um. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, and I was in my club days, and I was drinking. I was kind of like, I thought I was really really drunk probably not that drunk um and then i did this thing where i don't know why i did this i don't know if i can tell this story actually this is a bit weird anyway so <laughs> when i was drunk i don't know why i liked like stripping right which i don't think a lot of things what, have changed th they used to that regularly yeah right but not for anyone i just like i'd get out of the club and just like take my top off i don't know why it was really really weird and then one day still don't know how i didn't get fucking put in a cell for this um i i was in else court um and i for some reason thought it was funny to get my dick out <laughs> and <laughs> this is that is, it already sounds wait, wait, right. get my dick out and put it against the like shopping uh windows <laughs> what <And> like <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> like this. This is like at 3 a.m. Like, no, no, nothing's open. What, was and anyone then, in the shop? No, 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 no. It's 3 a.m. It's like, what? So you're basically walking up to a wall and putting your dick on the basically. <laughs> Being like, Wee. yeah. And then I got onto a van, and there was a police cut van driving by, and I used to love to do the helicopter dick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I used to like helicopter dick on the van. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty rogue, mate. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Very weird. I got out of that phase, though. What? So you used to do that all the time? <laughs> Not all the time, but it happened a few times. Me and my mates, it'd be funny. We're like, Way! get your dick out. What? So did you get naked in the club or just? No, outside? no, no. I didn't get naked in the club. It was like when you le left the club and we were like going home, and I was like battered, and I was like, oh, okay, and I was like, getting my dick out. What? So talk me through your lifestyle that stage were you basically just a promoter full yeah time? i was a uh, promoter full time what would a day look like a would day you, would you just sleep in the day and yeah so this is what a day would look like because i was i was promoting four five times a week um i lived with my parents um and i would wake up probably around 12 p.m 
I would then go on Tinder. I had to have a Tinder account and I would probably message 50 to 100 girls that day. Um, Do you want to go out? We had this copy and paste message. Got this club, get you on a table. Um, Because back then, promoting was like really cool. If you went on a promoter's table, you were like, you'd hype. So if a girl met a promoter, the girls, it'd be almost really cool for a girl to, to do that. So it was really easy. Um, and then you'd bring maybe 10, 15, 20 girls per night to a club and they'd go on a table, watered down vodka, um, on a table all night. And then you'd get paid 10 pounds per person. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, it was, to be fair, it was so actually- you, how many nights a week were you going out? Four to five. Wow. Yeah. And I was getting drunk every single one of them. Were I was, you- I got to the point like I looked great. Like I was- you know when you're you drink too, so much alcohol, you go yellow almost. I was going like even my mum and my sister were like, "You look." I remember it was my sister's graduation. I had just come out and I thought I was still quite cool because I was like a promoter. And I came to the thing, met all her friends who had graduated, whilst her younger brother is like promoter, thinks he's the shit. Looking, gr- there's a picture. I literally look grey and yellow, and I'm like, "Well done, sis." <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I did it for a year. I loved it. It was great. It's a great experience. I bet that'll be. Uh, were you pretty active, like with the girls? No, really. No, not at all. I would. I, I would. Yeah. I, like in a sense, I was. Y- yes and no. Like I. I. I would. Not that I. Ho- it wasn't like I hooked up loads, but I was very actively talking to a lot of girls, and maybe I. I snogged a few girls in clubs. I was so young, bro. You like. Wait, I, I've you, got a baby 18? face now, yeah. I've got a baby face now. Like, imagine, like, when I was 18, girls used to think I was so cute. Literally, she was like, oh, you're so cute. So they never <laughs> fucked me. <laughs> so um, I kind of, yeah, I kind of, um, yeah, it was, it, I, it, that wasn't my, like, it was my party stage, but it was, it was actually, I don't even count as my party stage. It was, like, the promoting stage of my life. I was, like, I was a promoter. I was going out and all that. Um, and then... I when I was nine when I at the kind of mid mid through my eighteen because I kind of promoted when I was seventeen anyway I shouldn't say that but uh, mid way through my eighteenth year um, of being eighteen uh, I moved in with my best mate and then not s- literally soon after that I turned nineteen at the end of the year and I met Maver and then everything changed then locked down locked down yeah literally relationship three years had a cat i thought i thought you were very single before maybe though no it was after maybe that I was very very single right which i still am actually yeah <laughs> um, up. yeah hey just say hey no uh no i no but everyone thinks i was because i i was a promoter and yeah i was i was very much a- didn't we talk about this on a previous episode though when we were talking about body count no i didn't talk about my promoting days because i swear you were saying like oh i was single before maver and that's where i like I had a, I had a, I had a, like, again, like, I'm not saying I didn't hook up, but I, it, it, it wasn't as much as you would think it was. It wasn't like, it was way more than an average guy, for sure, because I was a promoter. I was going out five times a week. Like, you was way more than the average guy. Well, let's say, uh, let's say the average guy hooks up once or twice a month, right? Is that, what is, what, uh, let's talk about this actually. What do you reckon is average? That's what I was, I was actually panicking there. I don't know. That is, the, is that average? What is, oh, what is the average? A lot less. Because, yeah. Oh Chris, oh, Chris Williamson. I saw that. Yeah, it's, it's a new stat. As in, sorry. Yeah, so at the moment, apparently, uh, the last year, um, if uh, how many, out of how many men, I can't remember the, the exact stat, one in five or whatever it is, haven't, if you ask them, when's the last time you had sex, it would be, it'd be like last year, it'd be a whole year. That's mad. Uh, dating apps are a perfect example of something which is both convenient and enjoyable, but not good for you. They have certainly opened up more opportunities for people to meet potential partners. And yet, we are in a world with the highest rates of sexlessness amongst young people. One in mad. three men between the ages of 18 and 30 hasn't had sex in the last year. The only half of men between the ages of 18 and 30 are looking for a relationship. Well, if the promises of easy access online dating were so true, how is it that we've ended up with a world where people are having less sex than ever? That sex, uh, sexlessness has also increased for women too. There are more childless women at 30 than there are women 
women with children. There's a study from Morgan Stanley that says by 2040, 45% of 25 to 45 year old women will be single and childless. If online dating was created... Well, we spoke about that on the last episode. Well, the, not the last one, the one before that about um, how less and less women want to have children um, and they want to be more independent. But the stat in the beginning, which is one in three men between the ages of 18 and 35, haven't had sex in the last year. Which Do you is... think that's... Because um, obviously over lockdown, that was very much... That must have been the case for a lot of people, right? Not you. <laughs> um, why are you smiling? I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, that's that's quite surprising. Yeah. I Especially mean... for like younger, like like when you're like early 20s, like that's when you would probably be most sexually active, right? Do you? Th- okay, can I ask you a question? Do you think... Um, it is harder for men in their early 20s now to get laid or to have sex than when we were younger and when we were in our early 20s. Do you think anything's it's way shifted? easier now. Do you think it's easier now? Yeah. Why? Why do you say that? Dating apps. Because of so many dating apps. Yeah. And it's so accessible. Yeah, you just literally meet up with someone like... Yeah, but that's you, right? Think about it. I'm talking about like the average Joe, okay? You are... You've got a great job. You're tall, good looking, muscular. What no, else? no, but no, but I'm saying I'm saying facts, like in terms of your privilege as a, a good looking person, right? You're way more likely to have uh a high percentage in hooking up with someone because of okay, you're tall, you're good looking, you're muscly, um <laughs> you're soon to have great teeth. Um and all of those things are added into your side, right? So let's say the average Joe, which I don't know what that means in sense what the average Joe is, but do you think still they've got a higher chance in hooking up because to of be, your data? To be apps? fair, I, I hadn't thought about it like that. Um, obviously, it gives women uh, like just a massive amount of choice. And if you're kind of like bottom of the pile, then I guess it's probably not going to be very favourable for you, is it? It's true though. Because- um, but I think that's, I also heard on another Chris Williamson podcast where he says that basically women are fighting for this like top- Top percentage. Top percentage. Yeah. They will fight for it. And then like the rest, you don't really have much sex in this this yeah. category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got those guys at the top who can just like fucking shag everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not quite that, but- No, but like- You know what I mean? Like they've just got like mad access to women and yeah. then everyone else is kind of just a bit like- yeah, no. Scrap, scrap, scrap it about for like... <laughs> getting the scraps. Yeah. Getting the trimmings. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's all the point of like, you know what? There are so many good men out there. However, women have this huge, I think, list of what they want in ideally the perfect man. Yeah. Um, And men sometimes don't even have like... Men will have like maybe one or two things that they kind of stand by, like what they want. Whereas women, it's there's it's always like he's got to be tall maybe dark yeah i mean he's got to be a really good job he's got to be earning this much money he's got to be in shape he's got to there's this thing where there's something i've always said um women and dogs are the only sorry that sounds really bad but in a sense women and dogs are the only um uh humans and things that get unconditional love whereas men we're loved on the condition that we can provide. And I think that's hu- that's massively true because we have, when you go on a date, the first thing a girl asks about the guy is, what does he do? Whereas when we talk to each yeah. other, what's she like? I think- How, Is uh, she really nice? Is she fit? That's what we say. Yeah. Uh, I, I also heard on another podcast, someone saying that um, basically women are more attracted to status than- uh, males are so like you know your job yeah um how much you're earning all that sort of stuff that that sort of status as opposed to like you know like you've just said maybe mm. it it makes it sound like we're being really misogynistic here maybe. no it's not no uh, this is by the way this is not we're not saying this is what we're hearing yeah and this is also from experience like yeah, yeah of course it does you know we have I, to, don't, I don't think it's true for all women no that's what i'm saying but but I, I, I'd love to hear, by the way, anyone who's listening to this or watching on the YouTube, uh, please comment below. Like, what do you look in, you know, in a man for? Like, what do you, what are your criteria? Because 
I don't think what we're saying is wrong at all. No, I think, like you said, though, there's just such unrealistically high standards nowadays because of so much option, like so many choices. Like yeah. back, like say 50 years ago, you just meet someone, like you wouldn't have online dating. You'd meet someone and you'd be like content, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. But nowadays, like you might meet someone and you'd be like, there's fucking loads of people out here. Yeah. Like I'm gonna, it's hard, I'm gonna it's, play the field. It's it's hard today. Like I look back at my parents when the way they met. Like my mum put a flyer on this po lamp post and for looking for a housemate, and then that's how they got together, and that was it. They they liked each other. Like I think love or relationships was very simple back then. Yeah. Like yeah, of course I was still cheating and there was still like divorces and all that kind of stuff. But in in sense of like actually the options that you had were very limited. Yeah. Whereas now you can date someone. Yeah. And the whole you know the whole saying of like the grass isn't greener, it is. Like because not not the th not obviously if you've got a genuine connection and a beautiful like relationship with someone then yeah the grass isn't greener but when you're dating someone in the early stages you can literally go online and find someone who has a quality that the person you're currently dating doesn't have and you're like oh well we're, I'm gonna switch over great she's she's actually nicer or he's actually better yeah and it's it's so hard it's yeah. really and like going back to the status thing do you not feel like even with you, with yourself, before you know you you're dating someone at the moment. But do you not feel like because of the status that you gained from being on Love Island, massively helped? Uh, I mean, I wasn't struggling before. No, no, that, I'm not um, saying you were. <laughs> I'm not saying you were, but do, don't you don't you agree that it? Yeah, definitely but that did. that that's. I don't think that's necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is status. Yeah, I guess it's status. It's who you but are. It's not what um i guess you'd commonly refer to when we're talking about like the status it's probably more about like your job your salary so yeah it, it, it is it that, is it definitely falls into that yeah it does um yeah it's, it's an interesting also what i find quite fucked up is the amount of guys that have to lie about their height because mm. on dating apps because girls just basically go all i want is above six, six foot. foot yeah in the description and it says i want a six foot girl. like i can literally like name Several of my mates who lie about their height on um Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. On their yeah. dating app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's mad. Um because it just cuts you out, mate. Like Well, we were talking about the top percentage when in that um podcast part of the criteria is okay, uh earning over a hundred grand a year. Yeah. Gotta be six foot plus. Um Athletic. Athletic, uh good morals, good with family, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that top percentage, do you know how fucking rare that is? Yeah, it's very rare. Like, is it rare though? Well, it's it's rare in the sense like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Laurie just going. <laughs> but it's rare in the sense like, you're not gonna, okay. How many people do we know who earn over a hundred grand a year? Realistically. Yeah, I I think. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, we, we, there's there's so much that comes into it. It comes into play for women, and it's like that's why I go back to the whole dating thing. A girl will say, "What does your What does he do?" The first thing she'll say is, "Oh, what does he do then?" Oh, he works in banking. He works on that. Yeah. Whereas when we go away, we go, "What was she like?" Oh, she was really really lovely actually, and like she's really caring, she's really kind, and all this kind of stuff. And she's actually really attractive. I actually kind of got. She's quite deep. I got loads of connections with her. Yeah, it's such a different. I would never. When's the last time I told you? Oh yeah, she does this. It's really like, I, I like her job is like it's actually quite sick. Oh my god, I can't wait to like you know, like she makes is this that much how money. girls talk about it though? Yeah. Or, or are they like, yeah, he's fucking fit? No, I'm not saying they don't do that either. But they, one of the most common questions I've heard from my fr my girlfriends is, what does he do? Yeah, what yeah, does yeah. he do? It is it is a common thing for them, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, you're right. It's um, it's rare that you know you'll go on a date with someone and you'll be like, oh yeah, I just went for this, went for a date with this girl. She does this. Yeah, you're like, oh. Well, 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 no, like, no, but like in the sense, like, yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong. Like I've, I've said this before. Like, I really like a girl who's passionate and ambitious yeah. and all that. But the, my, the last thing on my list, well, the, the, for me, the first thing on the list is, are you kind? Um, are you ambi like, are you like, are you ambitious for sure? Um, do you have chat? Do you, are you fit? Like, yeah, are you hot? How far on the list is, are you fit? Number one. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, for me, it's like, do I get, it's really hard to put a list on like what I yeah. want in a girl because for me, most of the time it's like, sometimes you just get a click. There's like a vibe and you're like, oh, I don't know what even this is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's actually quite an interesting topic as well. Like talking about like your type and stuff like that. I feel like everyone always has this stereotypical type, but it's a lot of the time it's not yeah like what people actually go for they've got this idea do you think you always go for your type you probably <laughs> Laurie laughs because he knows the answer to that no so i yeah I, I think you do kind of generally go for your type but on that note we are actually ending this episode and i feel like that would be quite a good topic for the next one so yeah, we'll, we'll discuss we'll, we'll discuss types and what does it mean your type of person and do you actually ever genuinely end up with your type mm. so yeah we'll, we'll, if you want to if you want to listen to the next podcast and uh, discuss things like that uh, comment below and uh, we will make sure we do it for the next episode perfect guys thank you so much for coming today um as always please subscribe to apple music patreon youtube spotify um really appreciate all the love and yeah see you next time yeah and also guys uh, if you want to find out what charlie said about the initiation uh, subscribe to patreon because we will um put that little clip and a new episode uh without the bleep um because it's quite shocking <laughs> but very interesting anyway thank you guys we love you cheers